We spoke the other day about nuclear submarines. I wanted to get more expert opinion. I'm joined now by Professor James Goldrick, who's a naval contributor to the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, former Rear Ad Admiral of the Royal Australian Navy. Thanks for joining us, uh, James. I appreciate it. I want to come to some of the impediments in a moment, but purely when it comes to capability and performance, why would nuclear submarines be better for Australia than diesel electric subs? Purely for capability and performance, nuclear submarines have an ability to go much faster for much longer than diesel electric submarines and to do so covert. In other words, they don't have to put anything up over the surface and they can move at speed underwater, where a diesel electric boat can spend a lot of time underwater very slow and it can, sur it can uh, burst speed for short periods on its electric batteries but if it's going to run on its diesels, it needs to stick up an air mast to what's called a snorkel, um, which makes it less covert, much more vulnerable and much noisier. So a nuclear submarine does, for capability terms, answer the tyranny of distance, which is one of Australia's great strategic challenges. So we're making a strategic compromise by going diesel electric. What are the big impediments to Australia actually going down the nuclear submarine route? There are a lot of impediments, um, and one of the key ones I would make is that although arguments are being put about the potential for Australia to go for a nuclear submarine program, to um, take the technology and to, de and to develop it um, in combination with other countries, and I think France would be the most likely contender for that, um, it would be very expensive. Uh, nuclear submarines cost a great deal more than diesel electric submarines, even the sort of diesel electric submarines we're planning to get. Um, and I think you'd have to look very closely at the opportunity costs. What could you do with the resources that you're putting into nuclear boats that you could use to do other things for defence, other systems, uh, unmanned vehicles, both underwater, on the surface and in the air, those sort of things. Uh, as alternatives uh, for the use of that money. The other way to look at this, though, is to look at a, a packaged approach, if you like. If you developed a nuclear industry in Australia that included nuclear power, we would uh, alleviate some of the costs in renewable energy and infrastructure around electricity. We would develop more self-reliance and reduce our carbon emissions. We would develop a new high-tech industry to support this uh, defence initiative. So there would be economic, environmental and strategic and security benefits, wouldn't there? Potentially there are. And, you know, I certainly think personally that there is a great deal of potential for Australia for nuclear power. Uh, but what I would say is that although that is a possible scheme, uh, it would take a very long time to set up. And indeed, that if we were to think about it seriously from a defence point of view for nuclear-powered submarines, you would be thinking well down the track for the current program uh, to say at some point you might be able to go nuclear. It's not a simple uh, problem. No, it's very, it's very say, complex. You know, sorry, to sorry to interrupt. Yeah, it, is, it is very yeah. complex. So I just wanted to explore that finally then. Is it too mm. late to go down this path? Or because it's so complex and, uh, and there are so many uh, strings to this bow, if you like, should we keep talking about it, investigating it? Is, is it a potential path for Australia's industrial, technological and defence development in the future? Well, I'm not a nuclear power expert, but my, my suggestion would be to keep talking about the potential of nuclear power for the national reasons you were talking about um, and, keep, and, mon and keep a watching brief from the defence point of view that if it proceeds, if the nuclear uh, effort proceeds to a certain point, at that point, you may be able to consider that option for defence for a nuclear submarine capability. But in the meantime, and I know, you know, that's another complex problem as we're seeing, um, you know, the challenges defence is having. Uh, we've got to get on with the submarine project we've got, get it working um, and get that build program underway. We'll talk again, hopefully, in the future in more detail about our subs. We're nearly out of time, though. I just wonder if the American nuclear submarines are 10 out of 10 at the moment, what would you score would you give us out of 10 for the, uh, the French diesel electric subs we're going to end up with? 
Uh, that's a, well, it's a little more complicated than that because American submarines do things that our boats aren't intended to do, um, and our boats can do things American submarines can't do. So there are certain things where our boats will be 10 out of 10 and the American boats will be 7 out of 10. There are quite a few things where the score is in the other direction because of the sort of things that I've talked about. But there are many uh, things that the boats we're intending to have can do that can actually complement the American capabilities that you've been talking about. And that's key. Th thanks for joining us, Professor. I appreciate it. Sure. Happy Pro Professor Rear Admiral James Goldrick uh, from the Royal Australian Navy and the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Fascinating debate, that, and we'll keep tabs on this. Obviously, this submarine project is, is uh, very, very important for this country.